Let me ask you, do you know which one of these is going to be the Tinoco S7 versus the S5? They basically look the same. But let me share with you what makes the S7 Pro different from the S5. And also, let me go through all of the features of the Tinoco S7 Pro so that you can understand if this should be your next wet-dry vacuum. Because the one thing about the Tinoco S7 Pro is that it is an expensive proposition. It is way more expensive than the S5, the S3. It is going to be in the upper echelon of pricing for wet-dry vacuums. So I'm quite curious, what do you get for your money? Let's go find out together. First things first, let's talk about what's similar between the Tinoco S7 Pro and the Tinoco S5. Well, for one, it's going to be the overall weight. If I pick both of them up, they're both going to weigh just about 10 pounds, and they're going to both come with pretty much similar dirty water tank and clean water tank size. The only difference is on the S7 Pro, the clean water tank that I can pull out right behind is going to be 0.85 liters, and the front dirty water tank here is going to be 0.72 liters. That's come in contrast to the slightly smaller tank on the S5, where the S5 is coming with a 0.8 liter clean water tank and a 0.75 dirty water tank. So a 0.05 liter difference. So not huge, not huge. Another key difference will be on the overall material. If you're looking at your Tinoco S7 Pro, it's going to have that texture feeling to it. On the Tinoco S5s, it's going to be smoother. If you're talking about more similarities in terms of their brush roll, those are going to be pretty much the same as well as how you pop off their front covers. So very easy to pop these off. They're going to be a little bit different in terms of the S5 is more opaque versus on the S7. And if you want to see how to take out the brush roll itself, I'm going to take out the S7 here. You can just pop it off. On the S7, if you just want to take out the brush roll, all you got to do is pull it out of the side and it will pop out right easily. And then you can just place this inside of your clean base and let it air dry on its own as you see me there. That's how I normally like to clean mine. And then once you're done with it, you could just place it back and reattach it. Then you just place it on the back of the cover, and voila, you're done. And you can just place it back on the base and have it operate in the self-cleaning mode. It's a similar operation on your S5, except that, well, guess what? Your motor here is not going to be as large on the bottom because it doesn't have that self-propulsion system. Now that we talked about some of the biggest similarities, let's talk about the largest differences. So the S7 Pro comes with self-propulsion. So what that really means is that it's going to be able to drive itself forward and you're going to be steering, similar to your car. This will do the moving forward and back and all you got to do is point it in the direction you want it to go. Another key feature on your S7 is that it's going to be coming with a 3.6 inch LCD display. One of the most advanced LCD displays you can get on the market and it's featuring the same eye loop system you would get on a S5 and S3. The Tinoco S7 Pro will always tell you what mode you're in, your battery level, and if you have to empty your dirty water tank. But it will not tell you the actual level of water or debris inside of your dirty water tank and your clean water tank. So the Tinoco S7 will be recycling its water with a balanced water flow at 450 times per minute and it's going to be coming with 40 minutes of run life, which is in contrast to the S5, which came with 35 minutes of run time. So what does that mean in terms of the run time of your S7? Well, that means you get a little bit more run time, but it's going to be better at the overall power management because of how they have different modes. They have something called an ultra mode now, which is going to be the most aggressive. And on ultra mode or the more aggressive modes that you have built in here, you're going to need to empty that dirty water tank quite a bit. Press the confirm button. The display is going to remind you of something that you would find in a car, and the voice on the Tenneco is still the same from the Tenneco S5, but the selection and the voice amount of voice prompts has been increased, because now you have max mode, you have ultra mode for electrolyzed water, auto mode here is going to be the same as you would get on a different eye loop, but auto mode is also going to share with you some more important pathing. But the overall ring is going to correspond with how dirty your floor is, so if you have a blue ring, that means it's clean, red means it's dirty, and you can even adjust the voice, you can adjust the brush roller method, you can adjust, adjust how much cleaning solution you're using, and they give you a lot more customization options than any other wet dry vacuum. I've so I have high yet. hopes for how good the Tinoco S7 Pro really is. So we're going to try this on one of the most difficult messes that we run on any of our wet dry vacuums, which is going to be on oatmeal. First things first, we're going to make our mess here. So we have our oatmeal, now we're going to be adding in our oat milk. That takes us to just about six ounces. 
Then we're going to dump our oatmeal on the floor. We let it soften up for about We let it soften up for about 10 minutes. So we're going to pour in our tinico solution. We're going to insert that into our tank. Because of the etched edge design on the brush roll, regardless of which way you're utilizing the Tinico, both sides are going to be able to clean the edges along your walls and your baseboards. Tinico S7 Pro made quick work of everything on our floor. It was easy to self-propel and it put everything inside of its dirty water tank. The informative display worked very well in terms of giving me the relevant information so I know exactly what to expect. But being totally honest, it is just a really solid wet-dry vacuum. Next up on this wet-dry vacuum is so that it can clean itself. So let's put it in self-clean mode and let's see how well it can clean on its own. The Tenneco display will walk you through the entire self-clean cycle, including when it's going to be switching between cleaning the pipes, cleaning the brush roll, and drying. Now, it uses something called centrifugal air drying, and that's going to be removing the water effectively, just like how you would do it if you're running this as a regular mop on your floor. But it actually will start spooling and spinning so that it can reverse the mop pad. And that means you're going to have a cleaner mop pad, but the air that's used to dry your mop pad is going to stay inside of your Tinico S7 Pro instead of going and contaminating the air around it. That just means you have less smells and less odors. Once it's done, the Tinico is going to remind you to empty the dirty water tank and then you can just let it dry and get it ready for its next session. In order to test more real world use, we're going to just be mopping our kitchen tiles and that are not completely flat. And as you can see, because of the soft nature of the brush roll, it does a great job going to all the edges and it can mop up my kitchen very quickly. And that seems to be the best benefit of it. This S7 Pro really does excel on marble, kitchen tile and bathroom tile. On these angled edges, it also is easy to use because you have three sides that are really etched edge instead of just the front being etched edge. So it makes quick work on uh, doing irregular side molding. So we finished mopping our kitchen and you can see the dirty water. It didn't use a lot of dirty water even though we had it on max mode, but our floors are very clean. You can see how clean they are. So very well done here. Now we're going to let the Tinico clean itself and then we're going to call it a day on the Tinico S7 Pro's test. That's the secret. Even though this is a very powerful mop, just like any other traditional home mop that you might be using, you still have to rinse and empty the dirty water tank. With that said, you don't have to strain it. You don't have to put it inside of a bucket. All you have to do is dump it out and go back to work. And that's the real benefit. And on the Tinico S7, the cleaning mode, the self-clean mode is also very easy to initiate, just like on other, other Tinicos, except I find that it dries just a little bit faster. And that's because they've updated how the brush roll will dry. But I find the easiest way to dry anything is actually just to open it and take out the brush roll and dry it on the actual charging station. Because if you do that, you're guaranteed that your brush rolls are gonna smell fresh. If you take a closer look at your Tinico S7, you'll notice that the bottom here is basically gonna be edge to edge. And I do think that the Tinico S7 Pro is slightly better edge to edge than the Tinico S5, but not noticeably different. And that's just because they have only shortened this area here just by like millimeters. So you can't really tell the difference here. It is still going to be etched edge in the front, just like your Tinico S5. So not a huge difference there in terms of the overall performance. They did update the wheel design. So on your Tinico S7, you'll come with these like all-terrain style wheels. In terms of taking out the dirty water tank, that's pretty much the same as well. You just pop this out, pop it out, just pop this out, 
and both of the dirty water tanks are basically being slightly reimagined but almost the same exact design. The big difference for me will be actually on the onboard controls. This Tinico is coming with new controls on the handles. And what are those controls? Well, for one, it's coming with a directional game pad in the front versus just two buttons on the Tinico S5 and the S3. This is coming with a directional pad that's going to be allowing you to select and have more versatility inside of your LCD display. You also have an OK or enter button and then you have the power button. Your your self-clean mode buttons are still gonna be up top. So on the Tinico S7 Pro, you can change the language, mute it, as well as turn on the Wi-Fi if you hold down the button on the back. Now, if you're looking at the charging stations, the charging station on your S7 Pro has been changed because of the orientation of its charging dock. So the S5 and the S7, they'll look similar in terms of their charging docks, but guess what? The S5 is not gonna be, but the charging cable is will be the same between the S5 and the S7. To be totally honest, I don't necessarily am not a big advocate of having Wi-Fi capabilities on the iLoop. I never think of using it ever and they, those Wi-Fi capabilities has existed from the i3, the i5. So I know that it exists, but I find that I never need to use it. If you guys want to know more about it, I'm more than happy to share with you. But it really just gives you kind of like the same display you would get by looking at your actual device. So then I'm like, well, what's the point, right? What's the point? It doesn't also, and it doesn't give you any of the information, like how soon is your dirty water tank going to be full? How much clean water tank do you have left? So it doesn't give you the information that I'm really looking for. The Tinko S7 Pro will also come with a five stage HEPA filtration system, which is just a little bit better than the filtration system on your Tinko S5, which came with three stage. Both are pretty much rated for 99.99% of particles. So again, not a huge difference there in terms of the overall performance for the air filtration. So then why would you ever get a Tinico S7 Pro over an S5 or an S3? Remembering that the Tinico S5 Steam is one of our highest ranked wet dry vacuums out there. It's corded, these are cordless, that's corded. So it's a little bit more reliable in my opinion. It's gonna have the power of steam and it has the same eye loop you would get on a S5. It's a little bit heavier, but that's because it has steam. How does that compare to something that's completely cordless that just because the brush rolls can go front and back, does self propulsion, and it comes with a little bit better battery life at 40 minutes versus 35 minutes, does that make a difference? Does that make it better than the Bissell Crosswave? And I'll give you a good example. If you just look at the trays for your Tinico S5, your S7, or even like a Bissell, they're all basically the same. There's not a lot of innovation that's left inside of these wet dry vacuums. You see companies like Roborock trying two brush rolls, just like on the Tinicos. The next wave is really gonna be like, okay, we can air dry and heat dry our wet dry vacuums. That's probably gonna be the next step. They're gonna start updating these because how much more can they do here without really reducing the overall battery size or increasing the battery life? Overall, I do like the S7 Pro as a coreless wet dry vacuum. This is one of the best, if not the best that we've tried on our show. But at the price you're paying for it, is it that much better than anything else? Mm, that's the dilemma. And with that, thanks for watching everybody. This is David with The French Glow. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box and please hit that like or subscribe button. It really does help support our channel and I'll catch you next time. This is David with The French Glow signing off. Bye, bye, bye.